this is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Well, we knew this was going to be bad. New car sales in China fell off a cliff last month. The country is grappling with its zero COVID policy that has many cities, including Shanghai, in near total lockdown. That kept car production well below where it would normally be and kept hundreds of thousands of consumers from going out and buying new cars. Only one million new cars were sold last month, down 35% from a year ago, and production was down by 45%. Just to give you an idea of how hard the market was hit, Tesla sold an average of 60,000 cars in China every month in the first quarter. Last month, it only sold 1,200 cars. When Rivian went public, the stock soared to the stratosphere. Now it's coming back down to earth. At its peak five months ago, Rivian had a market cap of $127 billion. It was worth more than General Motors and Ford put together. But the EV startup started missing its production targets, and the market did not like that news. The stock started dropping. Then yesterday, word got out that Ford was going to sell off 8 million of the 102 million shares that it owns in Rivian, and the stock dropped even more. As of now, Rivian has a market cap of $20 billion, but it has lost over $100 billion of value in only five months. Car buyers in South Korea are some of the fastest EV adopters in the world. According to Bloomberg, EV sales topped 100,000 units for the first time last year and the new EV entrants to the market are seeing quick success. Tesla sold nearly 18,000 cars in South Korea last year, making it the fourth largest foreign automaker, pulling it ahead of VW and Volvo. Yet, Volvo's EV brand Polestar had the top-selling foreign EV model in April, even though it only opened its first showroom there in December. So, foreign automakers are seeing some success in South Korea's EV market but it only seems to be with EVs. The South Korean market is dominated by local favorites, Hyundai and Kia, which account for more than two out of every three vehicles sold. Tesla is taking big steps forward with battery recycling. Last year, it recycled 1,500 tons of nickel, 300 tons of copper, and 200 tons of cobalt. With the surge in raw material prices, That copper is now worth $16 million, and the nickel is worth $45 million. Tesla also said that at the end of 2021, it was recycling 50 tons of material per week. But because most of its customer batteries are relatively new, it's only receiving a small number of batteries to recycle. And most of them are from vehicles used as taxis or are scrap batteries from its R&D and quality control departments. Tesla says it will be some time before it starts recycling customer batteries in large volumes. At Schaeffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. There are a few key reasons to start a business in Michigan. First of all, it's the talent. Second, Michigan is wired for winning. Third, the ecosystem here is really focused on supporting businesses in the market. We were talking about South Korea before the break, but we're not done there yet. About 20 years ago, Renault bought Samsung's automotive assets and has been selling and manufacturing cars there ever since, but with not a lot of success. So it's selling about a third of its stake in Renault Korea Motors to Chinese automaker Geely. The two are going to build ICE and hybrid vehicles off of Geely's CMA platform, which is used by many Geely brands, including Volvo. They'll be made at Renault's plant in South Korea starting in 2024. These models will likely be sold in other markets as well, possibly including the U.S., which has a free trade agreement with Korea. 
When this partnership was first reported last year, we said the vehicles could be branded as Renaults and sold in China since it ended its partnership with Dongfeng. And Geely could also use it for Lincoln Co. vehicles in South Korea. EV startup Bollinger Motors announced that Roush Industries is going to build its electric platforms and chassis cabs for Class 3 through 6 commercial vehicles. Bollinger will source and provide the materials needed to assemble the parts that will be done at Roush's facility in Livonia, Michigan, which is not too far from Bollinger's headquarters. Even though Roush is most famous for its racing activities, the company has extensive experience in vehicle development and assembly. It's especially good at low volume production, and this will help Bollinger avoid the manufacturing hell that's bedeviled so many other EV startups. Hydrogen power continues to make progress, at least in trucks. Hyundai announced it plans to deploy 30 of its Class 8 6x4 Exeunt fuel cell heavy duty trucks at the Port of Oakland, California in 2023. It made the announcement at this week's Advanced Clean Transportation Expo in California, where it will also discuss the challenges, policies, and business plans regarding hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Visitors to the show can get a first-hand experience in Hyundai's fuel cell trucks as part of a ride-and-drive program that it's running. The Bentayga is already Bentley's best-selling model, and now it's getting a new, long wheelbase variant. It's 180 millimeters, or a little over 7 inches longer, has rear-wheel steering, and the Bentayga's dynamic ride suspension is standard. There's not a whole lot different in the styling department, but the interior features three seating configurations, including an all-new 4 plus 1 layout. There's also a cool feature on the doors. The leather is perforated with a bunch of little holes that lets light through which is meant to mimic the diamond stitch pattern that you see on so many luxury cars. The new Bentayga long wheelbase launches in the fourth quarter of this year. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. GMC invited us to test out the Sierra Denali Ultimate and the Sierra AT4X models, which are new to the truck's lineup. First, let's talk similarities between the two. Both come standard with a 6.2-liter V8 that's mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission. The Denali Ultimate is also available with a 3-liter diesel. Both models come standard with a 12.3-inch digital instrument cluster a 13.4-inch infotainment screen, and a 15-inch head-up display. And both come with leather-wrapped massage seats. Okay, now let's talk differences. Each truck has its own unique grille design and different styling cues in the interior. The Denali Ultimate comes standard with Super Cruise, which is optional on the regular Denali. It's the latest version which adds automatic lane changes and towing capability. While we only got to experience it briefly, the hands-free system performed well and it handled auto lane changes smoothly. Moving on over to the AT4X, it's the off-road version of the Sierra. It features Multimatic DSSV spool valve dampers, front and rear e-locking differentials, along with 18-inch wheels and 32-inch tires. It also has a two-speed transfer case with selectable modes, including terrain mode, which allows one-pedal driving, which is especially helpful going up or down steep off-road trails. Speaking of which, the AT4X's off-road capabilities are pretty impressive and smooth thanks to the Multimatic dampers, but it's also a comfortable ride out on paved roads too. Both models are available now and are aimed at a premium audience, and that's reflected in the pricing. The Denali Ultimate starts at just under $83,000, while the AT4X is $77,400.
and both of those prices include destination charges. Say, what did you think of that concept car that Lincoln showed off last month? They call it the Star. We're wondering if this is a signal that Lincoln is headed in a new design direction as it goes electric. Is this the future face of Lincoln? And all of those cool features on the car, are they gimmicks or are they really headed into production? Well, those are some of the questions we'll be asking Kamal Couric, who's the head of design at Lincoln and who's also our guest on AutoLine After Hours this Thursday. So join John and Gary to learn more about how Lincoln hopes to transform itself as the auto industry goes electric. But that's it for today. Thank you for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.